I just saw Joker 2. And there's a part of me that wishes I didn't see it. <laughs> I love Joker 1 so much in 2019. Joker 1 is probably one of my favorite films of the past 10 years. <clears throat> it's a brilliant film directed by Todd Phillips, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin deserved his Oscar. Like, it's just the storyline was great. The acting was great. Action, violence, humor, that laugh. Everything was perfect. Everything was near perfect in that film or just or really just perfect, perfect film. So even to, to be honest, there was nothing Joaquin and Todd Phillips could have done to make Joker 2 better than Joker 1. Nothing. I, and, and to be honest, I don't know if they really wanted to make another one. I almost feel like like DC Films gave them a lot of money. Warner Brothers gave them a lot of money. So I almost feel like the, like the producers Mel Brooks producers with Zeal Mustel and Gene Wilder. And it's almost like, they're giving us all this money. What do we do? <laughs> it's like, I don't want to make another Joker movie. It's like, oh, we got to make it so bad and never invite us back. While we do a musical. Yes. Comic book people hate musicals. And we'll get Lady Gaga being it. You're a genius. We'll make the worst comic book movie ever made. <laughs> but here's the thing. Three quarters of me watching Joker 2, I didn't mind it that much. Okay. I'm a guy who watched the Tonys every year. I'm a big supporter of the arts. There's a lot of great Broadway shows. So I didn't like the idea back in 2022 when they said it was going to be a musical. I knew it was not a good idea because most comic book people don't watch musicals. They don't want that stuff mixing together. And if you are a comic book fan and you like musicals, you don't, you don't want those two things coming together. So somebody at DC Films should have said no. <laughs> we're not doing that. If you want a little bit of, bit of music in there, that's fine, but don't do it. Even Kathleen Kennedy, the head of Lucasfilms, who is horrible, never made a Star Wars musical. But give her time. Because <laughs> she's that bad. So yeah, somebody at DC Films should have stopped this. Or Warner Bros. should have stopped this. But he didn't. They, they let Todd and, and Joaquin do, do this film. But here's the thing. I actually like the storyline. I like I like the musical numbers. Um, that that one musical number, Mountain, was fantastic. It was shot beautifully. When they did the musical numbers, it was really, really well done. It's that they, they shouldn't just put them together. Um, here's the thing they should have done. Joaquin's Arthur Fleck and um, God God's Harley, they connected through music. So if they sang a little bit to each other or apart a little bit, I think that would have been fine. But when they sang and they went to full numbers, that's where the problem was. Now, it wasn't like this is Joker 2 is not a full fledged musical, right? It's not, it's not, you know, it's, you're not watching Wicked. <laughs> but there is, but there is enough where I can see it, it, it annoyed people. So three quarters in, I like the storyline because basically Joker 2 is basically uh, is a courtroom drama uh, mixed in with prison stuff and asylum stuff, but mostly a courtroom drama. Um, there was a funny scene that reminds me of like the killing mockingbird. So you say, on a, <laughs> I, that was actually kind of funny. So there's funny parts in it. There's good parts in it. Three quarters in, I was actually saying like, this film isn't bad. And actually, I just felt like this will be down the road if they want to turn into a musical. I think it actually be a really good Broadway, Broadway musical. Or I was, I was going to say that it could be a cult hit. It could be a cult classic. It might tanked at the box office horribly but it could, it could end up being a, a cult kit like rocky horror or something like that that's three quarters in what changed was the last quarter of the of the movie <sighs> there was an incident with with arthur fleck and the prison guards that wasn't shown but it was implied and i just felt like there was no reason for that i understand what caused that but that was just so extreme it's almost like man like did you guys had to do that but then it went back up because there was a big incident that happened at, at towards the last quarter of the film there was a big incident that had happened in the courtroom which i didn't see coming it's just like it just came out of nowhere it's like wow what was that and i thought it was gonna go a different direction but yeah the courtroom scene happened it was a, a big thing happens and i actually liked the scene that followed that I actually thought that scene was going to lead into something else, but it didn't. It went a different direction. And that's when things just started to go rapidly downhill. 
The thing about Arthur Fleck in the first film, you knew that he was mentally disturbed. You knew that he killed people, but you, but you know that he was, he, he was abused as a kid. Um, you knew that society <clears throat> didn't like him. They, they, they looked past Arthur. He was nothing. He was, he was a nobody. <clears throat> so you understand it when he finally, when he became Joker and he was talking to Murray and all that stuff happened. You, you felt for the guy. Yeah, he did a horrible thing to Murray, but at the same time, he's like, this, this, this dude just finally got fed up of the world. And this is how he blew up. Right. And even the ending scene, one of my favorite scenes in the first one is, is the scene when the clowns pull him out of the cop car and he's standing on top of the cop car and he does this thing with his smile. Like he did this, what, what it was bleeding and went like this. And then all the, all the clowns were cheering him. I was like, man, yeah, yeah, he did a horrible thing. <laughs> but yeah, yay, Arthur. <laughs> and then after that film, you walk out feeling good. Like, you know, it was, it was a horrible, violent film, but you actually felt good for Arthur Fleck. So at the end of the film, it was like 2019. I was like, yeah, Joker. 2024, I was like, oh my God, Joker too. <laughs> but it was the last quarter of the film. You just wanted Arthur for all the stuff he's gone through. You wanted him to have a win at the end. Some win. Just because he just, he's been a loser most of his life. And the only thing that gave him something was Joker at first. And then he met, he met um, Harley, Lady Gaga. And let me tell you something. Gaga and Joaquin have really great chemistry with each other. So much that I wish they actually make another film with, with uh, that's non-Joker. Well, you have to worry about that anymore. But anything that's non-Joker related, because um, I think they have really good chemistry with each other. And even in the film, you rooted for them as a couple. They're two messed up people who found each other. And you was kind of rooting for them, right? So the, so the last quarter of the film just deteriorates. And there's a point at the end. There's a controversial ending. And then, but there's the, the the moment before that ending, and Joaquin is walking, or Alfred Fleck is walking, and that could have gone one or two ways. They went one way, um, but I wish they went another way. And another way would have been if they would have flash forward months later, and um, we see Gaga with Arthur. I think that ending, in some form. And if you've seen the film, you would kind of get what I'm saying. I think if an Arthur Gaga, Arthur Harley ending would have satisfied the fans, I think. Even if the fans hated the music and all that stuff and hated some of the things about the film, I think an Arthur Harley ending would have satisfied the fans. They say, I hate this film, but I like that ending. Arthur's completely messed up. You gave him a win. I think that would have been good. But they went the other way. And the other way led to this controversial ending. Now, for me, I didn't mind. I don't like what happened before the controversial ending. I didn't like that at all. It kind of, yeah, I didn't like that. But the controversial ending, I didn't mind. Because in some ways, it's almost like it's plausible this happened. Because if you look at the t at the timeline, you know, when in the first film, Arthur was talking to a young Bruce Wayne and Arthur and, and Thomas Wayne was still alive. So if, you, if we're going by the timeline, I think it's very plausible this controversial ending could have happened. And it actually was kind of like, I didn't even hate that ending. It was, it was actually pretty innovative. And it's like, that's actually kind of interesting. That's kind of buzzworthy. I kind of dig that. I just didn't like the thing that happened before that controversial ending. So if you saw Joker, what did you think? No spoilers. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you like? If you did like about it, what did you like about it? Um, how'd you think about the acting? Um, yeah. So I can't recommend this film. <laughs> I wish I could. So if you saw the first one, don't see this one. And again, it's actually a really good story. The acting's really good. If you like musicals, it's really good. But I just, that last quarter of the film did it for me. So I can't recommend it. Damn it! Joaquin and Todd. <sighs> I guess I guess I'll have to watch Joker again and cleanse my soul. <laughs>